Coach, uh, you know, what are you looking for game to game in the preseason the most um, from all the guys? Well, this game you're looking for some details in terms of angles, stopping and starting when you're supposed to, reload, reloading routes, uh, stick position, all those little things that make you hard to play against during the year. Um, and then we'll look at D-zone structure. I think would be pretty good for us because we have a veteran group. The, the new guys have been working on it, so I think they'll catch on. Obviously, power play chemistry, we've got a spot open. Taylor Hall is the net front guy tonight in the first unit. We've used Felino a little bit in practice. So, we're, so you're searching for some combinations there. Um, but mostly uh, the little details of starting to, you know, what you need to do to play well, as I pointed out. The, the stuff that you're not going to do while you're doing the captain's practices or, you know, the summer hockey stuff, it's a lot of circling. And so that's one of the things we look for. And as we go through, like Saturday, it'll be puck management in the blue line. Start of the second period, for example, 10 minutes of bad hockey for us. We didn't manage the puck. We chased it the whole time. So those are things that, you know, we, that you're trying to build back into your game. And then with Halla, what have you thought of him so far? Halla? Uh, he's been a good player for us. He's around the puck a lot. He's willing to shoot. He can make some plays. He's got good pace through the middle of the ice. Um, I think he knows where he, he needs to be to be effective, and that's through the middle. He's, he's in good spots to receive passes. Uh, he's been strong on the draws. Um, and so, and like I said, you know, a different pace in the middle than what we're used to. Um, it has a left stick as well. It looks like him and Jake uh, you know, played well together, so we're gonna try to keep that together. Any hands for the mic? Bruce, uh, first game with McAvoy and forward together, how do you think they, they work with each other? Uh, I thought they were okay. I mean, there's that's stuff you got to look at a little closer for the bump plays, the overs, the, the you know the puck management stuff that isn't obvious. Um, how do they use each other as outlets? Um, so I'll, I'll look at that again. But I think Derek's as advertised. He's, he's going to try to make a good, clean first pass and. Uh, let Charlie be the guy following the, the play off the ice. Um, you know, penalty kill around the front of the net. I think him and Carlo each got beat once with a, a quick bang bang play. That's usually a strength of his. So those are some of the details I talked to Jimmy about this, the stick position, those things. You know, but, but you know, he, he looked like he was ready to close and and, and finish. And Charlie can you know pick up the, the loose pucks in those situations. That's what, what Charlie will have to learn the difference. Because he can eliminate people and, and end it, right? He's a big man, and once he gets sort of India, it's hard to get away from him. Whereas Grizz is more of a, does it with his hockey IQ and stick. So Charlie will learn that when Derek ends a play, there might be some opportunities to grab some pucks, be the second guy in there, and get going. That's one of the things we'll look for. <clears throat> Bruce, you've got three, uh, three games to go here. How, how soon will you trim down to a more reasonable number? And how we approach these last three games? Well, uh, Donnie and I will talk tonight. I think there's a, a plan in place for some of the guys. There's certainly some American League contracted guys that are still here. Um, we're going to try to work with, you know, one main group. And obviously, the, the, the game in Philly, we will probably be a last chance to look at more of the younger guys. So Saturday's lineup will be similar to the, tonight's. I think you'll see more of the main group in there. Um, and then Wednesday, the final game is obviously, you know, the most of the main group. So it'll be main group Saturday, so some sprinkled in some veteran guys, and, and but more younger group traveling to Philly. Um, El Marco is scheduled to play the whole game on Saturday, see how, you know, that goes. So that's how we're looking at it. Um, so there will be cuts over the next two or three days, whether they're all at once or, you know, trims half a dozen or so. I don't know, I'd have to get with Donnie on that. Coach, is there any type of concern or question about uh, Jack Stubnicka bringing consistency to his game? 
Well, every young guy, you, you know, you want that as quickly as possible. I think that's the biggest challenge for any young guy. That's why some of them get there faster than others. So um, tonight he had good second effort on the puck. We're asking him. I think with Jack, it's a, it's okay. You've been a good scorer in junior, good scorer in Providence. Here, it's about playing a good 200 foot game. You know, yes, we want you to make plays and and finish some plays, obviously, but. It's not like if Jack, if you don't, that this team's not going to be successful. We've got a lot of guys that, that can, can do that part of it. So he needs to understand the other part of it about contributing, helping the team win, whether that's a, being a penalty killer as opposed to power play, which he's used to uh, winning key draws. We're used to in that area tonight. You know, just being a, a good defensive player on that line, which you got some explosive winners. You know, right now he's with Hall, who's very dynamic, Smitty can score. so. Make sure you're, you know, you're being responsible for those two, which, you know, at this age, sometimes you want to get going the other way. So I thought he's buying into that better. Um, we'll see how that plays out. Obviously, Charlie Coyle, uh, you know, is, is in the mix right around the corner. But the more Jack can play and do that, the better we're going to feel about putting him on the ice in those situations. Yeah, I've got another four board one for you. Um, when I watch Carlo, he seems to be uh, very active uh, with the puck. If he doesn't have a passing idea right away and he has room, he skates it. Forward seems to do a little more of that pronger thing where he stays where he is and looks it over and decides where he's going to put it. And um, I was watching a little bit of the uh, series against Edmonton when the NHL Network replayed it. And Forbert was really great with the puck in all kinds of situations, even in the overtime. But he would like, like there'd be this huge gap between him and the forwards. And I'm just wondering how you want him to play. You want him to mirror what you see from Carlo there? Or are you just going to take time to learn how he plays before you decide how you want to talk to him about uh, how he works and with, you know, gap and all that stuff? Well, I think you go through, you know, your life playing the game and you, and you play to what your strengths are. And I think Brandon has always been a very natural, for a big man, always pretty natural skater. So he probably defaults automatically when I get moving. Derek's probably more of a vision guy uh, his whole life where I can, you know, I'll wait it out. I got some composure with the puck and I'll let the puck do the work. And, and there's no right or wrong way as long as it ends up in a positive play. That, that's what you're hoping for. Um, I think McAvoy does both. You know, he'll, he'll wait it out and have good vision and move it. And other times he, he pushes the pace. So again, it'll be sorting out what his strength is. To me, I don't think you can change him a lot, Nick, at, the, at this point in terms of, hey, you know, you gotta be thinking of sprinting up the ice. I'd rather be comfortable moving it, let the puck do the work. What I'd like to see him do a little bit better here, or get in the habit of doing, is after he moves it, get moving up the ice to be the next layer on the, on the, in the attack. That's an area I think, okay, without changing everything he wants to do, where he's gonna, you know, visually, and then, assess and move it, but get up the ice so you can reset your gap. I think that the, when you're moving up the ice, whether you're carrying the puck or I've already moved it, and you're, you're not changing, and it, it's going to help you defensively because you're going to close your gap whether no matter what happens. With, with whatever the forwards do, you're going to be up the ice and better prepared to deal with whatever comes at you next. And I think that's the messaging to Derek for the most part um, with regards to, you know, after you move it. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Anybody else? Thanks, Coach. Yep.